Anna Horsbach, MEP. Uh, we're here to Fondation Your Active uh, event talking about smart water usage. What's the European Parliament doing at the moment relating to water legislation? Oh gosh, quite a number of things and I could actually start with the things I have been involved in myself so far in, during the last year. And um, the first thing I did was a uh, common policy about um, how to protect the Atlantic mm -hmm. against, let's say, uh, something like what we're seeing in the Mexican Gulf at the time. And it was actually only a, a tiny add, adding something. Um, it has been on the table for 20 years and couldn't be adopted because there was a disagreement between Spain and Morocco where does the uh, border goes, which, what belongs to Europe and what doesn't when it comes to the Sahara. So, but we managed to have it. So uh, the, uh, the place which is in now is everything from the western part of Sahara up to Greenland and up to the ice mare uh, and uh, yeah what do you call it polar uh, polar ocean yeah and uh, now actually we have the opportunity at least to make a common policy on how to handle uh, natural scandals or w if a, if an oil ship will break or whatsoever pollution of any kinds that was the first i did and uh, recently i have been involved with um, the bonus 169, which is a um, program for the Baltic Sea. And bonus is a scientific research program seated in Helsinki concerning the pollution of the Baltic Sea, which has up to now, despite of the Mexican Gulf, been the most polluted, polluted water in water of the whole world, actually. And we are trying. We are trying to deal with, um, y you know, the Finns and the Swedes have been doing paperwork for more than 100 years. And to make white paper, it takes quite a number of of chemicals. And uh, it we found out that there is a big layer of uh, chemicals on the Baltic Sea bottom, on the ground, and um, there are still many mustard bombs from the First and the Second World War, which are not exploded. And uh, yeah, it's of course, uh, it's, uh, pesticides, biocides, agriculture, industry, and uh, you name it, all of it. And uh, it takes the water about 30 years to recirculate out of the Baltic Sea. And uh, that uh, all the small little fishes, herrings, mackerels, and whatever, ha is born in the Baltic Sea, and that we are ending up having polluted fishes when we are eating fish. And I think that is, uh, you know, it's a, it's the same about the uh, the Baltic Sea strategy, which I'm also in involved in, and the OSPAR. And but the Baltic Sea, let's stick to the Baltic Sea. The Baltic Sea is actually number of member states which are all a part of EU besides of Russia and we're actually trying to involve Russia and also Belarus because it, they send a lot of polluted rivers out into the Baltic Sea and just to have everybody on board to see if we can manage to get rid of no find a common solution how to reduce the pollution of the Baltic Sea and I think that in the Union we will see more and more of this kind of uh, macro uh, projects um, which where you can say, okay, this is a region that has the same project, m uh, problem. Let's see if we can do something in common to overcome this kind of problem. Mm -hmm. And I think the next we will see will be the Danube region. Maybe the next will be the Alp regions because you will have this more or less the same problems in more than just one country. And that you will see these countries coming together to find solutions for these specific problems in that area. Okay. Now, obviously that relates to, uh, to seawater, to salt water. What yeah. about drinking water? Drinking water uh, is very different from no north to south. If you if you come to uh, Greece or uh, Spain, where there's nearly no rain any longer, and then you look at Ireland, which is nearly drowning every summer, I think it's um, I think it's very difficult to find one solution for the whole union. I think at 
again we will have to say we have a macro region which has more or less the same problem let's see if we can handle it there but in fact, I think it is, at the first step, it is a national problem. It, it comes to you and me how we spend our drinking water. And do we need to have drinking water in our toilets, for instance, or could we use rainwater or uh, the so-called grey water? Yeah? Or do we have to more, do we have to reuse drinking water when it comes to the southern part of Europe to say, okay, it has to be filtered and then it has to go back to, for example, the toilets. Yeah. Um, but I think the, the problems which we have to face in Europe are very different from north to south. So I know that the Union wants to make equal rules for whole EU, but I, I don't really see that this is, uh, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But when it comes to drinking water, I think it comes to the private family and it comes to national problems first. And I would like to see all the regulations that EU had made so far being better implemented instead of making new ones and new ones and new ones and new ones. These are, these are things like the Water Framework Directive, for example, I presume. For example, yeah, for example. It, it could be better actually to say let's let's go back and have all these frameworks and all this regulation more simple and more realistic and mm, let's say put it the way more so that you can really um, make them feasible and realistic to use sure. yeah mm -hmm. instead of just making very uh, fancy and very high thought and theoretical things which nobody will ever be able to re-implement or to implement when I'm looking at Italy that has been a member for more than 50 years. There are a lot of things that they would never implement because it's, it's, it doesn't go along with the citizens in the country. Yeah? And I would rather like to see things more simple but practical.